Hello, welcome back to Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion for part 2 of the Lombardi campaign. Uh, you may recall in the previous part I tried to make a clever play. I went across the river to build a couple of forts um, and I think all I really accomplished by doing that was uh, I antagonized the Vandals who are now on their way west um, and it seems pretty much inevitable that they're going to attack our capital campus Lombardi. Uh, there is nothing we can do to defeat them. If they do decide to do that they are just going to be able to do it. So the best thing we can really do is make contingency plans and I'm still not sure exactly what I'm going to do but the way hordes work is when they take over a town they can either sack it or settle it um, and if they decide to sack our town we do lose it but then they'll move on. When they do eventually settle a few towns um, most of these kind of horde units, the ones that are represented by the wheel, they will just end up disappearing anyway. So the reason I bring that up is there is almost no reason to try to whittle down their numbers because at some point all of these units are going to disappear anyway with the exception of mercenaries and family members. So there is a pretty strong argument when they do break through that we should just take pretty much all of our most valuable units and send them to the north towards Campus Burgundiae and just try to hold that position instead. should be a lot easier, there shouldn't be too many hordes coming in this direction. But we'll see. I know at some point the Slavs are going to show up from this kind of area, so we do have to be careful of that. But that's still probably the direction I'm going to expand into, so I'm actually going to send this spy back over the river. And I'm going to have a look for the next settlement we could potentially move into. Now that we don't have to worry about the Burgundii, we can potentially uh, expand to the east. And we should be pretty much unopposed if we do that. I'm hoping this guy is just facing in this direction because we just spoke to him with our diplomat. I would really not like him to sack Campus Lombardi, but what I will do is recruit some barbarian peasants just to kind of hold the fort while the Vandals come and sack us, and hopefully we can then return and take our town back and think about expanding a little bit more seriously because right now we're pretty much just stuck on the defensive. Uh, I'm tempted to recruit some barbarian cavalry, they're pretty bad, but um, they are at least usable and we don't have too many cavalry here. Alternatively, I could just go further into archers. One thing I obviously don't have are berserkers, so I could go down that road because we might soon lose our ability to actually recruit berserkers, and in fact I do like that idea, plus berserkers are really fun, so let's go down that road instead. And I'm going to recruit some peasants here, and we can send them to the south and just swap them around with whoever's in Campus Lombardi, because I think it's going to be at least two turns before these guys reach us, and that might give us just enough time to make the swap. Apart from that, I don't think there's much else we can do this turn. We've got this assassin who's already acted, and we've got spy, who of course we just moved, so let's just end the turn, see what the vandals do. Okay, strangely they've actually left one of our forts B, and they're now attacking the other. I'm, I'm a bit confused by that. In theory I should be happy with that, but I, I'm actually pretty concerned. Well, for one thing, this is clearly a glitch because he's is besieging nothing right now. Um, I'm pretty concerned because that means they can potentially attack either Campus Burgundii or Campus Lombardi, neither of which would be good. Um, but on the upside it does look like the Burgundii themselves have moved away. So I'm gonna go have a look for them, see if we can just end the war so that's one less thing on our minds. They might not have gone this way, but we will at least find the, I think the Alamanni, or maybe the Franks. We're already allies with the Franks, so there's not much to be gained from that, but fine, whatever. We've already made that choice. Let's send our spy up to the north and see if we can locate this next settlement. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to pop up. The road just kind of ends there, so presumably it's in this direction somewhere. Normally you can kind of tell from the map, but um, it doesn't seem particularly obvious right now. So I'm just going to... scooch in this direction, see if we can find anything. It all seems pretty quiet, but we should definitely think about expanding in that direction just because it's relatively safe. We need to get our 14 settlements uh, and over here back at Campus Burgundii. This is troubling because we could lose everything to it. Probably what I'd do is just send my forces outside of the town. Alternatively I'd just bite the bullet and hoard up, but I like the idea of trying to hold out for as long as possible without hoarding. If we can get through the campaign without hoarding, that'd be awesome, but if we can't, that's fine, I'll just accept it. Uh, the Huns are at war with the Sommations, and the Goths 
have become allies of the Western Roman Empire. I'm guessing that's not going to last too long. So the peasants are ready, but I'm no longer sure what to do with them. Uh, crop rotation has been completed at Campus Lombardi, so we're at least making money again, I think. It says our profits have gone down, but that's just because of the things we're buying. Uh, I don't think we have to worry too much. I could probably bump this up to a very high tax rate. They are just about going to be okay with that, I think. When you drop to an 80% public order rate, there might be rebels popping up. So maybe we don't want to do that. I'll play it safe and just leave it be for now, as um, I should have actually bumped this one up. I can go to very high tax here without annoying people too much. And I think I will recruit another spy because we're going to be doing quite a lot with this guy and we're probably going to want at least one more. Um, our assassin could go after the Vandal family members, but I, I kind of just think that we just have to accept that they're going to kill us. Um, there's almost no point trying to fight them off. They will probably move on. They won't try and settle around here. And if they do, they become a lot weaker. As uh, That was a very quick turn, but I can't see an awful lot else we can really do. Cesspit is an option. Sacred Grove of Donar. Like I said, I kind of think we should actually destroy this shrine and replace it with the one that improves our food production. Tavern is an option. But I think we're doing okay for public order still. We should perhaps spend money while we can. Let's try this because this might actually give us just enough to justify bumping up to the very high tax rate for as long as that lasts. And we're just kind of stuck until the Vandals decide what they're doing. So let's see what decision they make. They actually appear to be backing off. The Huns I do not trust. And yeah, as expected, they are just trying to bribe us. Okay, this is interesting. I wonder if I can just rush my diplomat over to them. Unfortunately, I've been going in the opposite direction. So it might make sense just to recruit another one instead. If we can get peace with them, that'd be fantastic. I'm really surprised this fort thing actually worked. I, I only really intended this to delay them for a day or so. But they actually appear to have changed their minds. I don't want to jinx it. They might come back. They might just swing around and attack us that way. But this is actually looking okay for now. Financially, we're not doing too badly. I'm not sure how long that'll last. But let's try setting up a port so we can do a bit more trading. I think the Saxons, for one thing, should have a port of their own, so we can potentially up our trade with them. And our assassin is going to go after this guy. He's a pretty good diplomat. I'm much less likely to take him out than the Vandal diplomat from the previous part, but let's still have a go because we want to get rid of him. And um, unfortunately, we die in our attempt, but. I'm honestly fairly okay with that because I was running out of ideas for that guy and he was costing us upkeep, so I think that's fine. I'm going to send this spy to the west most likely, just so we know if the Saxons are plotting. And I could also send a family member over here to drop a watchtower, which I think does make sense. We've got Vithicab, our new 17-year-old, who can actually recruit some mercenaries. So some mercenary golden bands have become available once again. They're very expensive, but as we saw in the previous fight, they're pretty solid. I'm not sure if we would have actually won Campus Burgundii without the help of our Golden Band, so not going to rule that out. But uh, I'm going to hold out till next turn before I put this up because we want it to be as close to the border as possible. My Lord. Uh, and this guy, I'm not really sure what to do with him. I thought we'd find the Burgundii, but they appeared to have kind of disappeared. Okay, that's fine. So we've got communal farming, uh, that's helped with our income, and I think this is just flavour, I don't think this has any impact whatsoever on the gameplay. And we do appear to be making a profit, so that's fine. It might be pretty slow beginnings at the start here, um, but I think it's fairly okay just to bide our times and see what happens with the various hordes. Because I'm not sure if the hordes will actually drop in number, but... I know that we're threatened right now, whereas we might not be so threatened in the near future. So Campus Barbaricum looks to be our next conquest. They've got Step Raiders, who I think are pretty solid. I think they're one of the best archer units, but that's fine. As long as we can hit them with cavalry, it's not really a problem. Step Spearmen are pretty average, I think. And then Bruno, the governor, Shouldn't be too much of an issue, this spy is clearly having some trouble as, as usual. I think that's just going to keep happening. So let's go ahead and recruit probably some Barbarian Cav because they can catch us up. And let's take this guy out. This is actually going to force us to drop the tax rate. 
but that's probably fine. And so we can recruit things here, but it's the same mercenary pool as our other towns, so not too much to gain from that. I should potentially do this just with cavalry. One unit of spearmen is not necessarily a big problem, but we will hold out for now, and I am going to drop the tax rate here, which is going to mean we're not making an awful lot of money, but I think that's okay. Worth it. If we can get some nice expansion in early, that'd be great. Um, and we can, of course, consider sending some peasants over to the fort so we can free up our archers. But let's just see what the vandals do. Uh, that happened very quickly indeed. So, the Sarmatians want trade. Let's see if they'll pay us for it. Excellent. And uh, I'm not sure if I want to strike up an alliance with them because I think they're going to find themselves at war with quite a few different factions and we would potentially predispose for some stronger rivals against us by doing that as the Vandals do appear to have decided to attack us once again. No idea what's going on with these guys but we should at least be able to get a diplomat to them soon. I'm not sure if that's going to work but it's worth a go. Um, let's see if we can get trade rights with these guys, as we can't because they are of course a horde. Still thought it'd be worth a go, since we're not going to reach the others this turn anyway. But next turn we should be able to talk to the Vandals. This is so ridiculous, like they could literally just go to the south and come up this way, but I'm not complaining for now. It does seem to be good news for Campus Burgundii, because um, they are not going to attack that by the looks of it. Can't be completely confident, but it's looking reasonably promising. I'm just going to drop a watchtower here because that's going to be very helpful should the Saxons decide to betray us. And there is actually another rebel town right there, but I think if we go for that we'll inevitably be causing some border disputes with various other factions like the Franks and the Saxons as well. And let's try and bring this guy back to the town to show up the public order. Uh, which does free up this spy. I don't think we necessarily need him to be up here, so let's send him to the south. Unable to move. Unable to move. And I can potentially go for this settlement. It's a little bit more strongly defended than it was in the past. But like I said, I I think that is a, just a very easy target for various horde factions, so let's not risk it. We can always take it later. Pretty much no point taking I demand uh, settlement right now because it's just going to get crushed over and over again most likely. So we have no money to spend. This is not a good sign. But we have recruited a few extra units. So that's good at least. The Sarmatians are in flight so as expected they are at war already. I think this was their settlement right here. So I'm not sure where they're going to go exactly but Hopefully they'll fight the Vandals or something, it's going to be too late for us when they do, but still. Keep moving towards this, and I can recruit peasants somewhere, so let's go ahead and recruit some right here. See if we can rescue our archers. And financial situation being what it is, it looks like we just have to move on. We have now spotted the Burgundy. I'm not sure where they disappeared to for a while. Maybe they were just sacking this town. I uh, forgot about this guy, we can actually go and try and strike up peace with them. There are the Alamani, and I'm still not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but these guys are probably going to come to us and attack us. I think this settlement right here is one of their campaign objectives, but they won't hesitate to expand in our direction in general, so we need to look out for them. And let's have a word with the factionaire, see if he is willing to accept a ceasefire, and this time I won't make the mistake of trying to score some money from them. No. Okay, they don't want a ceasefire. Okay. I don't think they're going to attack us though, so I think that's completely fine. Let's just end the turn. Vandals now attacking both of us at once. Um, Huns are actually trying to bribe our diplomat now. Western Roman Empire expanding towards us, that's fine. Hopefully the Saxons will attack them. Still making no money, but we've got a port, which doesn't appear to have made a great difference to our income. 
I don't think this is going to work, but we have to try it. Yes, master. I will talk to them. Usually what happens with the, these AIs is if they've decided they want to attack you, there's not really anything you can do. Oh, but they actually accepted. Still, that doesn't necessarily mean much. If they still want to expand in this direction, then they will, and there's not really much we can do. They will probably just attack us again. But it's not like they're trapped on an island with us or anything. They might just decide to go south now, which would be perfect. Not that we gain that much from hanging on to our current lands, because we're not doing too well financially right now, but at least we can maybe finesse these tax rates a bit. And we do have a little bit of money we can spend. Ideally, at this stage, we'd be spending it on buildings. And this is pretty much why I don't think we need the Shrine to Donar, because this money situation is not going to get much better anytime soon. Whereas, if we go for the Shrine to Frigg, at least we'll make a bit more from farming. It's probably worth it on balance. And we can recruit another unit of peasants if we want to. But I think, now that we have two different units of those, they probably serve their usefulness. Summations are going to expand towards the Eastern Roman Empire, and that is just our ceasefire that we've agreed. Now let's see if that's actually worked. Let's see if the Vandals can be staved off by something as simple as a diplomat. We'll soon see. Yeah, I thought they might do that. The thing is, the way the AI works in this game... Also, what was that? The way the AI works in this game... Sometimes they'll attack you and then immediately agree to another ceasefire, if that's what it takes. Yeah, I thought so. So if they just like move away slightly each turn, um, that might actually be okay, and then if we can send them to the south, they'll probably fight the Goths or the Western Roman Empire, either of which would be completely fine, as um, that is just the Hunnic diplomat trying to bribe us. And I'm going to send these archers over to somewhere they can be a bit more useful. I think if I go to the east now, um, I would potentially just draw the Vandals in our direction. So I'm going to go to the west instead and just join the garrison at Campus Burgundiae for the peasants in the fortress. And I don't know if that will spur them on to attack the fort more readily, but um, it's a bit of a waste of archers to leave them in there. So the Shrine to Frigg is built, I'm assuming that increases our income. It does look like we're making a little bit more. Kind of hard to tell. We do have the same option here. We've got the Shrine to Wotan here. If we hang on to that for a, little bit, uh, for a little while, we can just keep retraining units and get extra experience until we do decide to get rid of it. So I'm pretty tempted by the Sacred Grove of Frigg instead. I think we can't underestimate how much of an issue money's going to be. We have a fairly good roster, but these are not exactly high income towns. So let's go ahead and go for that, as uh, once again, we're not going to be able to build any units this turn, but we are slowly edging towards Campus Barbaricum, which should be fairly easy to take, as long as it doesn't get too much stronger. Doesn't seem to be so far. We do have to catch out the Step Raiders without being caught out by these other two units. Going to be relying entirely on our faction leader for that. But I think he can probably do it. And that is all just stuff we already know. Now, is there much we can actually do with our Diplomat now? So this guy's kind of busy dealing with the Vandals for the foreseeable future. Um, but we do have another one. Yes. Yes. And I'm not exactly sure what to do with him. No idea where the Burgundy Eye have gone, but we can find the Frankish capital here. We can see it's extremely well built up, unlike our own. And I'm not going to talk to these guys. If they want to offer me an alliance, I think I can get more money from them, but um, we don't have much to gain from talking to them right now. So let's move towards the lands of the Alamanai instead. And once again, I think we're just going to have to accept. We don't really have the money to do very much right now and just go ahead and end the turn. Still being bribed by this guy, perhaps I should recruit another assassin. I can't see him succeeding, but yeah, it looks like these guys are not going to leave. 
I could probably just stall them here forever. Obviously, I won't do that because that's a bit cheesy, but I'm still hoping that the AI will kind of rejig itself a bit and they'll leave us alone. Because they are going to keep accepting that. I wonder if they'd pay us for an alliance. We just harvest their money from them. <laughs> yeah, they actually do pay us. Okay, so we got an alliance this time, so they have to actually make the decision to betray us in order to go to war with us again. Which is bad for their reputation, but I don't actually know if the AI cares about that at all. As uh, so over here we are now able to attack Campus Barbaricum, um, and we can also recruit some different units from here by the looks of it, so mercenary horse archers could definitely help. They're fairly expensive on the upkeep. Whereas these guys are a lot stronger by the looks of it. Okay, they're not much stronger, but far superior defense. Um, but the upkeep is very similar, whereas the recruitment cost is very different. Which suggests to me that in the long term, the mercenary Allen horse archers are not a great deal. But still, it's going to be kind of awkward to deal with the faction leader. Not the faction leader, the family member of the rebels here. So let's go ahead and get a bit of, bit of extra help. As uh, Rando has now got a mercenary captain for cheaper unit costs, extra cash from looting. I thought that would give us plus one command as well. I think it does in normal Rome Total War, but not in this one. Okay, that's fine. I think that was worth recruiting, just to make this a little bit smoother. And we can assault it immediately because there are no walls. Okay, so the Warlord has spawned right in front of us. I'm hoping we can draw him out. Probably going to have to edge slightly closer to the town. The big risk here is our Allen Horse Archers are not going to have a, an even remotely good matchup against um, the Archers of the Rebels here. Uh, looks like there are actually two units of Spear Warband there. I'm a bit confused about that, but no. Um, the Archers are indeed in their midst. And they're going to cause us some problems. So we have to make sure we don't get into their range. Um, they are very good units, these ones. I know they have extra long range, so they might just be able to shoot us from here. Probably just need to back off in that case. But if we can catch them out with our faction leader, that'd be great. Um, Barbarian Warlord appears to be at least considering coming out, but um, doesn't look like he's going to do that reliably. We need to be able to catch these out with our general. This particular unit, if I'm getting the right one, um, is still a little bit of a threat, even in hand-to-hand. -hand. So it looks like they've not yet committed to attacking us. But the good news is these guys... Ah, jinxed it. They are now able to attack us, so I'm going to pull out. Because you can see just how quickly we drop when they start hitting us. At this difficulty, it's not an even remotely good matchup. And uh, it's going to be really hard to draw that Warlord in. I suppose if I attack them with my own archers at the same time, I might just be able to make something happen. So, uh, there does appear to be a slight gap now. If I can just find a moment to catch these out without getting the Warlord involved, that'd be great. Not going to be easy, kind of depends on catching out the AI, which is to be fair, sometimes very easy, as uh, right now, this guy's kind of drifting away. I know as soon as I move, he's probably going to start coming towards us again, but I do wonder if we can just go for a nice hit and run. Seems pretty unlikely to work. Still, he's not moving so far, so this could actually work out. Looks like we are going to get a nice charge off, do some damage to them, take out as many as we can before the other units start to move and now we need to pull out before we get killed. Hopefully our general is not this guy in the middle there which it looks like he's not so that's good. Um, we've managed to take a few of them out but they're still strong enough that they can do some real damage to us. Let's, um, let's see if he's actually going to come for us this time. Wouldn't be surprised if he just pulls back again. But need to be ready to pull back all the way towards our spearmen. So you can see just how heavy the losses are here. We're on skirmish mode, but um, as in the previous fight, in these kinds of battles, the units do tend to go in a very unfortunate way. Still, uh, they do appear to be coming for a full charge, so let's see if we can grab them with our spearmen. 
and catch them out. Looks like we will be able to pull it off. And perhaps we can flank with our general. This is by far the biggest threat, so if we can catch him out and rout him, that could essentially be a victory. So we've got a nice surround going here. And I assume he's going to break very quickly indeed. Our faction leader is on the outskirts, so he's fairly safe. And so it looks like their numbers have dropped massively. They're starting to rout. Okay, apparently he is the enemy king, so leader of all the rebels on the map, apparently. Should now be able to go for these archers. And um, they're pretty far away from the spearmen. The spearmen will, of course, come to attack us, but hopefully we'll be able to do some damage before they do. They're going to get off one volley. It's going to do some damage. Looks like they're going after our spearmen, so that's fine. Let's just take out as many of these as we can. So that was a really nice charge. It broke them immediately. And let's just grab some kills while we can. The are going to come in and try and kill us. We're going to try and leave. I don't think we took any losses there, so that's good. We can now bring in our in archers, as we presumably now have the advantage, even in ranged combat, as uh, that makes it that little bit easier. Down to just their last 14. Spearmen slow to respond. And we can pretty much just whittle down the spearmen using our own archers. It's uh, still pretty open, I think we can just keep this going. And they have almost nothing left. I believe. It's a little bit dangerous if our king gets caught out, he could die, but it's unlikely. And even if it does happen, it's not the end of the world. The main thing is that we take the town. He's a, he's a fairly old faction leader. I don't think he was particularly good either. Okay, they're going to come towards us, that's fine. Um, we are taking some losses against the archers. They only have a few left, but literally pretty much any time they land a shot on us they will get a kill, as uh, they are down to their final archer. Don't think we have to worry about that anymore. And we should just be able to will them down with our arrow fire. Some, they're coming towards us, but they turn back, as the AI often does. But let's make sure that we're able to get away, as it uh, looks like something has gone horribly wrong here, but somehow we managed to rout them before anything too terrible happened. So the Allen Horse Archers are pretty much half dead, but they did their main job, so that's fine. And obviously we'll pay less upkeep as their numbers dwindle. So we'll end the battle like that. That was okay. Obviously very much worthwhile to have an extra settlement, which will hopefully give us a little bit more income and help us to expand. We can expand towards the rebels fine, but the rival factions right now do appear to be uh, a little bit stronger than us, so we've got to be pretty careful. Let's see how much this makes us. I'd prefer to occupy it, which it looks like we can. Ah. So there's like zero, zero population here. It's pretty good for income, but we are of course going to need to garrison it. And the way upkeep works is it's distributed according to population. So uh, often these smaller settlements look like they're making you loads of money, but actually the only reason they have such a high figure is because they're carrying very little weight when it comes to your army's upkeep. Unfortunately, some rebels have appeared next to Campus Burgundii. Yes. Um, I'm not sure why exactly that happens, because they're at least happier than Campus Lombardi. But I think we will have to deal with them at some point. They're going to lower our income and our trade with the Saxons. I have no idea what the Saxons are doing. I thought they'd go for Campus Chatty pretty quickly. But don't appear to be doing anything so far. I could send this guy up to check it out. I'm pretty curious because they are one of our nearest neighbours. And our other spy... As I've said, these two are potentially possible for us to take, but... We'd have a big target on our backs, so... Not super keen on doing that. Yeah, Rando is uh, hes pretty old, but he's... He's not really got that much going for him. 
He does increase income. Okay. So we've got 300 left in the bank, I think. In that case... Ooh, we're just slightly short on the archers. I'd probably like to get a few more archers here, but we are pretty low on spear warbands, so let's get one of those instead. And... Let's go ahead and end the turn. Like I said, I'm not just going to keep stalling the Vandals forever. I'm not trying to cheese the game here, but... On the other hand... And it depends what kind of player you feel like being, because I, I don't want to just cheese the AI. Um, but this is part of the game. The game is letting me do this. It's a fairly intuitive thing that I'm doing. I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to ask for a ceasefire, which they will accept. And I think that'll just keep happening. And then I ask for an alliance. And let's see if they actually pay us for this. Yeah. So I could pretty much just milk them for money, while also stopping them from doing anything keeping my capital safe. This is kind of just one of the flaws of Rome Total War. This isn't exclusive to Barbarian Invasion. Stuff like this happens in the normal Rome Total War as well. Um, but obviously it puts me in a bit of an awkward position as the player because uh, I don't want to just take advantage of that even though it's completely ridiculous. Sacred Circle of Frigg gives us even more income. So I could potentially try and hold them off and then try and you know, let them through when I'm actually ready to take the fight, but realistically that's just not going to happen. This many doom stacks will just crush us no matter what we do. Okay, I think I should probably focus on Campus Burgundiae because, like I said, I don't want to cheese the game. I think we should just let them through. wonder if I can just destroy this fort. Got some archers in here, I wonder if we can keep them alive. Probably not, they're going to get chased down, but we've emptied out the fort um, and that should open the path for the Vandals. I'm being extremely generous here, this is not a good way to win the campaign, but obviously cheesing the AI is not ideal and not the way to go. It kind of defeats the point of picking very hard at the start of the campaign. Okay, so the Meeting Hall enables us to recruit experienced Spear Warbands. Uh, the Blacksmith obviously is always helpful. But I think... We need to focus on income. So we can get Mines plus one if we can save up a bit more money. In order to do that, we could potentially just build something very cheap. I think the Tavern is a decent option because it will of course increase our public order and we can then up our tax rates to make up for it. And then Campus Lombardi. I will just keep recruiting here for now. But I'm pretty ready to abandon this. Okay. I'm guessing we can't do very much over in Campus Barbaricum, but let's have a look. So we can go down the Christian path. I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, Wooden Palisade will keep us alive, but I'm not expecting to be attacked here. So let's go for the Shrine to Frigg. We do need to grow this town, so it's a bit of a win-win. Um, and I should really try to get some units back to Campus Burgundia if I can. I think I have a few agents we haven't moved yet, so let's check out what's going on with them. So I think these guys... or well, this guy was going to check out what's going on with the Goths, perhaps. That's worth a look. Also, the Sarmatians will be down here somewhere. My lord. Uh, our diplomat is very experienced here. I'm not sure if that's improved recently or if that's just how he came. Lord. And then we have another spy here who I'm going to send to the south because there should be another settlement. The settlement that we originally uh, riled up the Vandals by building near, apparently. Which is... I'm not sure what it's called, but it's in the region of Trobus Vandali. So, let's have a look find where that is and see if we can potentially take it because we're going to be pretty unopposed over here. There are the Sarmatians but they're already on the move. Then over here there's the Roxolani which might actually be this one. No, I think they're over here um, but they're unlikely to come all the way to attack us so I think that's fine. 
and then we still have 300 in the bank so let's make sure we don't pass up the opportunity to recruit a few more units and we have just a couple more diplomats so I should probably seek out some trade rights already have them with the Vandals, not the Vandals, the Saxons but I do want to find out what these guys are doing so we'll give them a spies job for now so they've clearly left their town I'm just not sure where they've gone but we will continue looking and this guy I am going to keep around because I'm willing to try and strike up a ceasefire a couple more times because they might still end up passing us by but I think definitely that fort was just causing some kind of massive log jam um, so although it worked you know that's clearly a strategy that can work uh, it's it's one I've given up on so the vandals can actually participate in the campaign they appear to have broken off from each other an Eastern Roman diplomat trying to frig us down over here which is going to help our income that little bit more um, roads will also help quite a lot we can build here for now go up to a high tax rate and we'll start with roads for the improved trade although actually we need to get that growth in as soon as possible so we'll get farms trade by the vandals not at all surprising but let's see what they're actually doing with their units they might have decided to move to the south instead of the west Can I be of service? so we'll start by talking to this guy some trade rights see if we can get some money for it too okay so not gonna get any money but I think they might just accept it as a neutral offer which yes they do and I'm not gonna offer them an alliance I think they would pay us for it but I want them to ask me similar to the Western Roman Empire they might be willing to pay quite a lot for that as uh, certainly it does look like some of the vandals have moved off but I'm not sure where exactly let's try and rescue these archers and over here we'll just get some more archers too so we're at least making a decent amount of income for now but I think in terms of expansion we do want to be focusing mostly on the east because things are going to be really unsettled in Europe for a long time so here is Vicus Vandali apparently it's the capital of the rebels so there's probably another king in there somewhere five units in its garrison so we definitely need some help from mercenaries either that or we send a lot of units over here which is going to take some time there should still be stuff available to be recruited around here which yes there is still we can't really leave this town for some time public order would just be too much of an issue and I believe I've already alluded to this but I believe that barbarian peasants in this game although they are extremely cheap um, they are not as efficient when it comes to improving public order as they were in normal Rome total war I think they're something like half the expected rate so worth bearing that in mind although they can still be used to shore up public order it's not quite as effective as you might expect and we can just keep recruiting some barbarian cav if we want they're not too expensive and obviously it is useful to have a strong force anywhere on the map so let's just keep moving towards that we can make use of them even though their stats are very low uh, if you can charge someone in the back it doesn't really matter about your stats you can still route them and we'll in turn got to use that spy but fine okay so here are the Saxons they do go for that town eventually hopefully they'll find themselves in dispute with the other barbarians of central Germania instead of us as uh, this guy is really old <laughs> good looking 53 year old man who's also a pagan and has a, a tiny bit of influence because he's good looking not at all interested in that I don't know who Edelgund is she might be really old herself but I don't need to be adding that guy to my faction right now as um, the Vandals, this is still strong enough to take us out, so it's kind of annoying. Seems really unnecessary to build four rams for the sake of taking out some peasants. But uh, I don't know where they've gone, which is concerning. We do have this spy who can go and look for them. So there's no sign of them down there. I'm kind of surprised by this. They haven't really got anywhere else to go. So I can go and check this out. It's actually pretty weakly defended. A couple of units of peasants will be very easy to clear out indeed. And 
I was going to say there's no family member there, but the Warlord is essentially the same thing, so it's still got to be a bit careful of that. It's going to be very similarly defended to the previous fight, except with added peasants, which is okay as long as we can get a few mercenaries to help us out. I don't think we need to keep the spy around here. Let's go ahead and have a look for the rest of the Vandals. I'm not sure where they've gone. And over here, anything that's going to improve our income, we should prioritize. A stockade could help us defend, but we don't really need that right now. Rebels are blockading our port. I'm just going to have to just leave that, I think. It's really not a priority for our income to be building ships. We have nothing really to do with them. Unless we wanted to expand all the way towards Britannia, but there's absolutely no reason to do that. I am pretty tempted now just to let the Sacred Grove of Woten go, and the Shrine of Woten as well. But if we train up our Lombard Archers, then we can at least benefit from a plus one experience for this final time. And I'm also going to recruit some Spear Warbands. And we've got 400 left in the bank, which is not really enough to build much, but over here in this town... I think we're still building the land clearance. Yeah, we are. Okay, fine. So we can recruit one more unit here, which makes sense. The Huns and the Goths are at war with each other. I would back the Huns there, I think, most likely. The Goths are going to find themselves destroyed pretty soon, or at least hoarding. And the Sarmatians have settled in Thracia, which I'm assuming is right around here. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't keep that territory for very long because that's still going to be yes. highly desirable to many different factions at the moment. And let's just go ahead try and strike up a trade deal with the Alemini. And this guy, he still needs to stay somewhere near the Vandals if we can somehow make them leave without attacking us. That would be great. But no. I'm really not sure where most of this stacks went. They do just seem to have vanished off the face of the earth. Okay, we'll end the turn. As, uh, okay. <laughs> they go for the assault on the fort. Um, they're coming in with well over 4,000 men. And obviously these peasants are going to get absolutely annihilated. I somehow managed to get 14 kills. That's honestly pretty impressive. So they take the fort. That's fine. Um, they do appear to be moving to the south, so that is a massive relief if they do keep going that way. Uh, we can potentially actually look to expand after that. Uh, unfortunately, they've actually garrisoned the fort. So hopefully they won't stay there for too long, but that's, that's going to be really annoying, potentially. At some point, though, they will settle. And when they do, all of this stuff's going to disappear with the exception of the commander himself and any mercenaries he might have. Over here in Campus Barbaricum, uh, we're still going to prioritize income. We're not expecting to get attacked here anytime soon. And so that is proving to be a pretty nice money spinner for now, but still want to expand to the south, definitely. Now let's have a look at our mercenary options. So I can go and get three units of mercenary horse archers. That's probably worth doing, so I'm going to avoid spending money in these two towns for now. I'll go for infrastructure, but I don't think we want to be increasing our upkeep right now. I'm going to bite the bullet and get rid of the Shrine to Woten, and I'm going to replace it with the Shrine to Frigg. At some point I will start recruiting Berserkers, they are really fun, and they are extremely powerful and they get incredible numbers of kills sometime, sometimes, but we just have to be sensible right now. We have to increase that income. And we can afford to recruit another unit, but... Now's not the time. We're going to save up for those mercenaries. As uh, This might actually be the the total of the Vandal Horde. I can't imagine they have too many more stacks than that. Let's see what they do. I keep forgetting about my agents, but it's not too important. Okay, so he actually left, uh, considered coming towards us, but then appeared to have changed his mind. I'm not sure what's going on here now, because we couldn't have trade rights with them before. But it looks like they might have settled. Okay, it's good that he's not bribing us at least. 
Uh, we are just going to be kind of stuck for a little while until we know exactly what's going on with the Vandals. Okay, they've declared war on the Franks. I'm not sure how that ended up happening. They're nowhere near each other. I think an assassin might have been caught. I would have to check their objectives to see exactly where they're trying to get to. I know they need to get somewhere in Africa, but their objectives are pretty crazy. They, I think they have to settle somewhere in Iberia and somewhere in Italy as well. And so we do have a decent amount of money now. I could potentially step out of the town. It's going to be kind of difficult. I can actually get mines too. Okay, so this is going to be really good for income. So when the Slavs show up, they won't settle here, but they might sack it. And if they do do that and we can't defend it successfully, we just need to come back as soon as we can. Is, uh, they're still relatively happy. Okay, that's a good sign. So in terms of these units, we're going to have trouble with the archers. Just have to try and catch them out again. Spearmen will be fine. Even though they're good against cavalry, obviously horse archers can kind of overcome that weakness. I am just going to make a move on it, I think. And we've got two spies here in pretty much the same place. So the Goths, for now, appear to be hanging on to their lands. This spy we're going to send in this direction, see if there's anything else coming. Doesn't look like there is. Campus Barbaricum can build something else. Uh, I think we can justify going for the trader for the extra income. And we'll try to resist temptation here, although having said that, we know that the Shrine to Frigg is a good option for the income. And so yeah, the Huns have settled in Tribus... I think that's Aesigis? Aesigis? I don't know. Um, I think that's somewhere... Somewhere in the steppes. Kind of surprised by that. It seems like a bit of a poor choice. I'm sure we'll soon find out. As uh, the Saxons have fought off some rebels, I don't think they're actually interested in coming into our land, so I'm not going to worry about that. And uh, it does look like the Huns have stopped bribing us, so that's a good sign. Okay, the Saxons have declared war on the Franks. I think I actually do prefer the idea of trying to stay friends with the Saxons because we only need 14 settlements to win the campaign. And we can of course just do that by focusing on these areas. So if we can just kind of have the Saxons on our western frontier and they don't come and attack us, I uh, could actually make that work. And it keeps us safe from the Franks and potentially keeps us safe from the Alemanni as well. I know they're around here somewhere. That appears to be Roman lands. I'll go this way. Okay, the Burgundii are at war with the Western Roman Empire. I'm guessing they're looking to settle somewhere near Iberia, although they can't have made it that far yet. Uh, the Huns are allies with the Alemanni, which makes me not trust them very much. Um, and they've also declared a ceasefire with the Sarmatians. They've gone pretty peaceful now, so they're probably not going to be a massive threat. And then the Saxons and the Franks we already know about. And we're not making a huge amount of money, but I think that's okay for now. I think we pretty much got away with it with the Vandals. Obviously, they're still lurking. They could come and kill us, but uh, I think they might not do it. Okay, so this is where the Huns have decided to settle. They still have some hordes left. I think they need a total of three settlements before these guys all disappear. Okay, and the Goths are to the east. So we'll have a look at what they have. But as you can probably imagine, this whole region, especially with the Vandals potentially heading in that direction too, is going to be extremely unstable for a little while. So although in theory this settlement is wide open, I'm not massively inclined to go for it yet. Do have to be a little bit careful here because I'm not sure if I'm about to leave, leave the recruitment zone as uh, the numbers of available mercenaries does appear to be going up. I can't imagine this would be a different mercenary pool, so let's just take the step as, yeah, it does look to be completely fine. And just recruit them when we're right outside the city. I'm assuming we're not going to get attacked by some random rebel here, but if we do, we can back off at least a little bit. 
and I'm going to resist the urge to spend money right now. Let's just end the turn. So the Goths are on the move, but they're not hoarding. Vandal's going east, that's a bad sign. <laughs> we can see a di uh, an assassin there too. He was at least considering going for us. Assassinids have come all the way to the west. I don't think they're going to particularly affect this campaign. Okay, so some concern here that the Vandals are on their way to the rebel capital here. But honestly, that makes absolutely no sense because this is pretty much where they spawned. Um, and if they didn't choose to take it before, I don't see why they would now. I think we should wait for at least one more turn. I'm going to send our diplomat after them. Keep an eye on them. And once again in these two towns, I'm probably just going to hold my nerve. Anything that improves income, I'll probably go for it. So Sacred Circle of Frigg, is, it's a bit too expensive. But we can go up to a very high tax rate now. And this town already has one, so that's good. Again, all of this stuff is pretty expensive, and I think we just want to Orders. hang on so we can get some mercenaries on our side. Move. So I think we'll probably end the turn pretty quickly. I'm going to send this guy to the north to keep an eye on what's going on with the rest, as uh, the Roxolani appear to be coming towards us, not as a horde. So I'm not sure what they're playing at there, but... They don't really have anywhere to go except into our lands, so that's another thing to potentially look out for. Probably a good thing I sent the spy in this direction in that case. So I'll send him just to follow this guy around. Uh, this guy is in Tribus Alemini, so their town must be somewhere around here. There we go. Get trade rights. I don't really trust them. When it comes to an alliance. And plus, there's always that risk that I'm going to accidentally irritate someone else by becoming their allies. So, we won't do that for now, but I'm going to send this diplomat to the east, just to check they're not expanding in this direction. As uh, the Saxons have taken Campus Shetty. I mean, there, there is an argument for going to war with the Saxons, especially now that they're at war with the Franks. Because they're going to be torn in two different directions. But... In this early stage, it's fine to be a little bit more conservative. Moving. Okay, so here we have Colonia Dacia, uh, and it looks like the Huns are going to go ahead and attack the Goths, which is going to be very costly for them, and potentially once they do settle it, they'll have very little left and will be actually quite vulnerable to being taken out. But I don't think we can do much to take advantage of that just yet, as yeah, they are going to besiege it, but they, the Goths managed to fight it off for now. That's probably not great for either faction, to be frank. So uh, I think they will eventually take it, but all that's going to do is cause the Goths to hoard, and then the Goths are going to come to the west, and hopefully not attack us. Doesn't look like this guy's moved. The Vandals are on the move somewhere. Okay. So they appear to be going by Vicus Vandali, which is a good sign. But I'm not sure where exactly they're going. We'll keep an eye on it. They probably won't go for Vicus Vandali because it is their starting location, and if they wouldn't go for it then, there's no real reason they should go for it now. This is a little bit too expensive, but I think three should be enough. And... We will just go for this. We're going to take some heavy losses, but that's fine. These mercenaries are never really going to hang around. We can attempt a night attack. I'm not sure what we gain from that. Let's do it for the fun of it. Okay, so we've successfully gone for a night attack. I'm not exactly sure what we gain from this, but... I imagine it can't do us any harm. As, uh, let's have a look here. Is there someone we can catch out? This appears to be a spear warband. Step raiders there, okay. So we'll just spearmen units, that's fine. We can easily take advantage of those with our horse archers. 
and as long as the archers don't show up, this is going to be completely fine as it looks like... Ah, the step raiders are the archers, I see. Okay, so it looks like they're actually going to be very easy to take advantage of here. Wow, look how quickly these drop. We've been distracted unfortunately, but luckily they are routed. I'm going to stop these guys from firing. And let's just try and do as much damage as we can to these. Okay, successful route. So this went extremely well. Not sure why exactly. So in the middle they've just got two units of peasants. Uh, the Warlord could still be slightly dangerous, but we are pretty much just completely free to attack him, as uh, I think there's a little bit of friendly fire going on perhaps. Draw back. And we're just going to try and weaken that warlord as much as we can. So these units all have two hit points each, so they won't drop at first, but once they start to drop, they should drop pretty quickly. So our units are beginning to fire. Still need to be a little bit careful, of course, because as in the previous two fights, there's always that risk that we won't actually be able to pull back properly. So they are going to come out, definitely. Of course, any peasants who get caught in the crossfire, that's also good for us. Not that they're a threat. But if they're a threat anywhere, they're a threat in the town square, so still useful to take them out. As um, they do appear to be coming for us now, I'm going to try to run away. I don't really trust the units to do the right thing here. I gave them plenty of time, but no, they've still been hit. We're going to have to bring in our own Warlord. So we're going to take heavy losses here. Yeah. So we've lost that unit, that kind of sucks. But as disappointing as it is, it's not at all surprising. Um, let's see what we can do here. So it's 40 against 24. We've got the difficulty settings against us, potentially the hill against us too. But it does look like they're dropping a lot quicker than we are. I will attempt to charge in with these guys. Obviously they're not great in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, it's... It's not looking amazing. It's really not. Yeah, the numbers are starting to swing against us. That might have been a mistake. In fact, I'm pretty confident it was. But the fight was not going well, so we had to do what we had to do. As long as we take the town, it's fine. Everything is acceptable. So it's 23 against 11. Still massively in our favor, you would think. And this time round, they're not quite as close to the Palisades, so managed to take them out, okay. Heavy losses, but fine. It means we don't have to pay their salaries. In particular, um, the Sarmatian archers were extremely... No, they weren't. They were expensive to recruit. They weren't expensive in upkeep, so actually that's, that's pretty bad that we've lost them, but fine. Definitely worth it to take the town. It's going to pay for itself very quickly, as long as the Roxolani and the Vandals don't come to attack it. As, uh, I could attack this with my general, but far safer just to wear them down with the horse archers. They're going to come and try and run us down, but you would certainly hope that skirmish mode would at least work against some cruddy infantry units like these. I have no idea what's going on there. It's spreading all over the place. You guys pull back, though actually you routed them, so that's fine. We still have so much ammo left that it makes sense just to keep shooting them, instead of taking risks. Bodies littered on the path. Uh, but there's still another pretty healthy unit we can go for. Says they're all firing, numbers not dropping yet. Looks like they are going to be able to chase us down, but they should route if we actually charge them.
I'm gonna charge into these ones. Okay, and we're not quite gonna get them, but that's fine. Focus on these. Just trying to speed this up, really. Obviously, this is not optimal. We should just be shooting them. But yeah, I'll probably edit this out because uh, it's uh, it's proving to take a long time. And obviously, the right thing to do is just to attack them with arrows instead of charging in, which does result in some pretty crazy routes. Second thoughts, I think that's their last unit. Although it's not, actually. There's another one still in the town, but there's almost nothing left of that. So General should be able to take it out on his own. It's almost risk-free. There we go. Okay. I mean, kill count massively in our favour, but obviously that was not ideal. Uh, we did lose quite a few units, but in the long term we're never going to keep these horse archer mercenaries. We can't train them back up, so they're not too useful to hang on to. And there are st some more still available if we want to go for them. But yeah, we're going to occupy that town. Uh, looks to be fairly low populated again. But let's get the palisade because this one definitely is at risk of being attacked. And we can actually recruit a spear warband straight away, so let's do that. Retinue expands, veteran warrior. More command when commanding infantry, that's good because we're just about to recruit some. Extra hit points from the shield bearer and a good amount of income across the board so we have expanded pretty decently here up to four settlements i'm not feeling massively threatened yet i think the vandals could just pass us by and in fact it doesn't even look like they're in our lands so it's looking fairly positive but still a lot to do we have to be expanding all the way to northern italy in order to win the campaign so still quite a few challenges to come yet but yeah thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed as always do check out the playlist link in the description where you can catch the next part and I will see you next time.